Hello everyone, welcome back to the castle of Dr. Brain. Okay, so when we last left off, we were here in the clock room because we like big fat clocks. And uh, let's take a look around. So this is, did I already look at some of these things? I think I did, but this is the, uh, the intruder alert alarm, which we can't do anything with because it's alarming, or I guess the other way around, it's alarming that we can't do anything with it. This is another Dr. Brain's famous garage sale artifacts. This is a clock that runs backwards sometimes. It doesn't keep very good time even when it's running, but might make a pretty good fan if you attach some fan blades. So I don't know if you noticed, but when we um, solved this puzzle here with the four buttons and made things quiet down here, the clocks, uh, the hands on this clock rolled around or they turned around very quickly for a while. You probably noticed it. It was fairly obvious in the previous video. Anyway, what do we have here? Visitors to the castle need to punch in on this time clock. Dr. Brain is very big on punctuality and expects you to punch in at exactly the right time. Pünktlichkeit. Um, but before we can punch in, we need to get a time card. There are a few in the desk drawer here. We'll get to that in a second. This is a water-powered cuckoo clock. It must be another of Dr. Brain's incredible, invention, incredible inventions. These are the four buttons that we... Oh, it won't even describe the buttons now. It just says this is the button pad and the buttons no longer do anything because we've disarmed the alarm. That back here is an elevator. This over here is, uh, well, obviously it's a sundial. Dr. Brain wanted to make sure he could still tell time if the power went out, so he installed the sundial. Of course, he forgot about the minor problem of having two floors of the castle between this room and the sun. That triangular thing in the center is called a gnomon. Is the G silent? Is it Gnomon or is it Nomon? Nomon. Okay. Um, oh yeah, yeah. I, I did look at some of these because I remember that joke about Greenwich Mean Time. Um, so this is one of the famous dancing elves. If you turn on the radio, the elf will dance for you, but not anymore because we made sure that everything stopped working. Ooh, here are some of Dr. Brain's most timely reference works. There's a copy of Stephen Hawking's A Brief History of Time, Robert Heinlein's Time Enough for Love, Martin Heidegger's Being and Time, and Madeleine Lengle's A Wrinkle in Time. Um, I actually uh, I actually have read most of these books, except for the one by Heinlein. I read Starship Troopers instead, and... Uh, I've been meaning to read The Moon is a Harsh Mistress, but I never got around to it. Okay, anyway, um... Oh, it, I meant to click on the books. I think I did click on the books, but instead it tried to... Oh, no, sorry, you don't have enough time to read these right now. Yeah, so actually what it, what it activated was these two hourglasses here. So this is a state-of-the-art Acme 40-second time lock. Of course, Acme is in a very small state. It makes Rhode Island look like a continent. Uh, for those of you who are not Americans, Rhode Island is by far the smallest of the 50 states in the United States of America. A pair of hourglasses has been provided to help open the lock. That's these two things. So, okay. This puzzle is very different uh, based on the level. So on the novice level, it's pretty, uh, it's pretty straightforward. And then on the, uh, I think on the standard and expert difficulties, you get a totally different puzzle. Not a totally different puzzle, but the, the way that you solve it is significantly different. So let's do it on the novel difficulty first, or novice difficulty first. Okay. So... To open this lock, you need to press the open button, that's this down here, exactly 40 seconds after pressing start. You can flip either hourglass immediately after either runs out. Of course, the lock is really controlled by the hourglasses, not by actual time, so you have a few seconds to make each flip, but you have to flip, flip the hourglasses in the right order to measure out 40 seconds to open the drawer. The large hourglass will run for 45 seconds when flipped, and the small one for 15 seconds. Um, so... This, on a novice level, it's pretty easy. You need to measure out 40 seconds. So the big hourglass runs for 25 seconds and the small one for 15. So what do you do? You wait till the big hourglass runs out, then you flip the small hourglass, and then when it's done, you click on open because obviously 25 plus 15 is 40. So let's go ahead and do that. I'll go ahead and hit start. And when you hit start, it automatically flips both of the hourglasses, but that's okay. You can flip them pretty much as many times as you want. With, with this button, they can flip the, the big one, and with this button, you can flip the, the small one. So, uh, so let's go ahead and wait until the big one runs out. That'll be 25 seconds. Get ready for it. There we go. And now we flip the... 15 second one, 
And when it's done, that will have been 40 seconds, 25 seconds plus 15 seconds. And the fact that this hourglass ran before doesn't make any difference. It doesn't really have any bearing on anything. So there we go. As the last sounds fall into place and you press the open button, the drawer opens to reveal three time cards. And we can take those cards and use them to punch into the clock there. But let's go ahead and restore the game. And uh, let's crank up the difficulty. I believe the puzzle is exactly the same on standard and expert levels. I think it's exactly the same puzzle. So let's just crank it up to expert level because I think you get more points for playing on expert level. And now we get something very different. Look at the times here. Now, instead of being 25 seconds, the left clock is 35 seconds. Now, how can you measure out 40 seconds using 35 seconds plus 15? You can't because 35 plus 15 is 50. So this is kind of related to a puzzle uh, or a whole category of puzzle, actually, which I remember from when I was a kid. When I was a kid, there was a category of puzzles relating to measuring things out using different size buckets. So, for example, let's suppose that you have a, um, a bucket which is 3 liters and a bucket which is 5 liters. Um, I know Americans don't use liters, but then use quartz or, or whatever is is pretty close to a liter. Um, but yeah, let's, let's just say, so you've got, you've got a bucket that's three liters, a bucket that's five liters. You want to have exactly two liters of water or whatever liquid you're using. How do you do that? You don't have a two liter bucket, so how do you measure it two liters? Well, what you do is you fill up the five liter bucket, pour it out into the three liter bucket until the three liter bucket gets full. And then when you're done, what's left in the five liter bucket is two liters because five minus three is two, right? So it's kind of something similar here. Um, what you need to do is, again, when you click start, it'll flip both hourglasses. What you need to do is, when the little hourglass runs out, flip it right away. The point of doing that is then when it runs out the second time, you will have 30 seconds. 30 seconds will have transpired. And because this hourglass has 35 seconds worth of sand, that means this hourglass has five seconds left at that point. I'll, I'll repeat that again, just, just because uh, the, the logic here is a little crazy. Like the logic here didn't make much sense to me when I first heard it until I, you know, it's, it's not that difficult when you, when you understand it, but you have to kind of work it out. So I'll, I'll, I'll repeat that again. The point is to get first, the, the first step is to get five seconds worth of sand in the big hourglass here on the left. To get five seconds worth of sand left in this, you flip this over wait until it's empty, or until the sand runs through, flip it again, wait again until the sand runs through, and then you've got five seconds worth of sand left in this one, because this is a 15 second hourglass and 15 plus 15 is 30. So when this runs out twice, that's 30 seconds, you've got five seconds left here. Then at that point, you flip this one again, wait for this one to run out, and then flip this right away one last time. The point of that is that while this was running, while this the sand on this side was running uh, for the last five seconds here, you now have five seconds worth of sand at the bottom of the little hourglass. Then when you flip it over again, you've got that five seconds worth of sand which runs back and adds five seconds to the 35 that this one had. I don't know if that makes much sense. It Maybe it's something that you just kind of have to think about for a while. To, let me go ahead and show you what you do. Maybe it, it'll help to see it. I don't think it helps to see it because if you see it, you might. if you don't understand it at this point and you just watch it, you might think what kind of voodoo magic is that? It's not, like I said, it's not that complicated, but here we go. So they're both running. Wait, now we do nothing. We just wait for this one to finish, first of all. So when this one finishes, we'll have 15 seconds. Okay, done. Flip it right away. So now that's been 15 seconds. When this runs out again, um, that will have been 30 seconds. So we'll flip this again when it runs out. Okay, that was 30 seconds. Now wait for this to run out. Wait for the big one to run out. 
Okay, we're at 35 seconds. Now flip this one over one last time, and that should be five seconds worth of sand at the top that's going to run through. And as soon as that five seconds worth of sand transpires, we have 40 seconds. Boom. As the last sands fall into place, okay, we saw that before. That's how you do it on standard and expert difficulty. It's quite a bit more involved than the novice difficulty, but um, yeah, it's, it's not super difficult once you, once you understand the logic. And this next puzzle by contrast is really easy in my opinion. It's just pattern matching. So if we come here and look at this thing, um, so the time here will actually run uh, if you wait for a while. It's not, it's not in real time, I don't think. Yeah, see, it, it went over, it rolled over to nine, uh, nine hours and one minute. And if you wait a little bit longer, uh, it'll go again. It's, it's not real time. I mean, the, time, the timer does run, but it's like 10 seconds per minute or something. So it's like six times real time. So what you're supposed to do, if you mouse over the, this time card here, notice the pattern. This is just pattern recognition. And this pattern is the same on every difficulty level. It's the same for novice, standard, and expert difficulty level. So we see that the card was used previously at 112, 224, and 336. So the pattern is pretty obvious. The next time will be 448. You add 1 to the hour, and then you add um, 12 to the minutes. So yeah, so the next one will, will be 448. Now, of course, you could wait until the time here just goes to 448, which would take an unreasonably long amount of time. But we have this key here. So we can just stick the key in the slot there. And then we have these three buttons that we can use to manually advance the, uh, the clock. So we want 448. What I'm going to do is I'm going to leave it at 447 and wait for it to roll over. There we go. You got it. Because sometimes if you set it to the right time and then try to grab for the card, it'll actually roll over to one minute past the time you want. So it's uh, I prefer to set it to one minute before the time I want, and then when it clicks over, it'll be the time that... Okay. So this card's being used at uh, those times. So obviously, again, it adds 2 to the hour and 15 to the minutes. So the next time will be 10... Actually, it'll be 11. If you add 2 to the hours, you get 10.45, but then add 15 minutes to that, and you get 11. So it should be exactly 11 o'clock. Again, these, these puzzles are, the, these times here on the time cards, it's the exact same puzzle for all three difficulty settings. I don't know why, why they didn't customize this one for the, uh, for the difficulty settings, but they, they didn't. So, so we'll go ahead and, let's go ahead and say it's 10.59. Wait for it to click over to 11, and that should be it. There we go. Okay, last one. So this card has been used at... Ten, okay, so here they're subtracting. And notice... Okay, so first they subtracted 2 from the hours, then they subtracted 3 from the hours. So going by the pattern, I'm going to guess that the next time they subtracted 4 from the hours. That gives us 1 o'clock for the hours. And what are they doing with the seconds? It looks like they're adding 9... Yeah, they're adding nine to the seconds each, t or I guess I guess that's minutes, actually, not sec. I guess that's supposed to be minutes and hours and minutes, not minutes and seconds. So yeah, so they added uh, they add nine to the minutes each time. So the next one, so the next minutes should be forty five, right? Yeah. So and the hours was one. So the next time should be one forty five. So let's go ahead and set this to one o'clock. And oh, can I? Got it. Got it before it clicked over. All right, good going. You're now punched in and ready for work. The back door opens to reveal an elevator car. Those of you who have played Police Quest 3 might recognize that they used that exact same elevator sound effect in Police Quest 3, which is fair. I mean, it's the same company, so they, they did recycle their sound effects sometimes. So yeah, this is just a maze. This is just a pure maze, and um, let's let's go ahead and do this next time. I'll I'll try and keep these episodes short because um, you know, again, it's a short game, and if I if I pl if I play the game for like half an hour in each episode, then the whole game's only going to last four or five videos. So let's let's stretch it out a little longer and go ahead and say that we'll uh, we'll stop here for now. So thanks for watching, everyone. This was the clock room of the. Uh, Castle of Dr. Brain, and I will see you folks later. Bye-bye for now, and keep braining.